The International Institute for Strategic Studies looked into various countries that are dealing with turmoil to figure out which countries are actually the deadliest. Now unsurprisingly at the very top of that list is Syria because of its conflict and some of the actions taken by Bashar al-Assad against civilians and rebels. But just to compare the numbers, you should keep in mind that Mexico is actually the second country that's considered the deadliest where tens of thousands of people are killed every single year due to the cartel violence there and the continuous drug war. Now Syria is the world's deadliest conflict zone for the fifth consecutive year causing an estimated 50,000 casualties in 2016. Wow. That is an insane number of people who have lost their lives as a result of the conflict. In Mexico, the number is a little under half. So 23,000 people died in the fight against drug cartels in 2016. In other smaller Central American countries battling cartels, including El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, another 16,000 have been killed. But let's just pause there for a second, Anna, because mm -hmm. combined that's 39,000, they're almost caught up to Syria. Yeah. I mean, nobody talks about it, but this war, on, this insane war on drugs, cost 39,000 lives in just those countries in just last year. It, it drives me crazy. We know Nixon's aide told us we started the war on drugs for political reasons, because we wanted to target the two sets of political people against us, blacks and liberals. And we thought, oh, well, we get to imprison them. And before those political reasons, we've now has, have this insanity, we know marijuana is is not any more dangerous than alcohol. There's a ton of studies that show that it's actually far more beneficial than alcohol. And and yet we continue this madness. We imprison all these people in America, right. millions upon millions of people, and then all those tens of thousands of people die in Mexico. But here in America, we're like oblivious to it. Joe Manchin in West Virginia, a so-called Democrat, saying we start a new war on drugs. No, nah, it's look, it's so dumb. But honestly, this goes. Further than marijuana, and I know that this argument makes some people uncomfortable, especially considering the fact that we're dealing with a heroin epidemic here in the US. But right now, cartels are turning from marijuana to other harder drugs because the reality is that as you legalize drugs in the United States, like marijuana, there's less of a business opportunity for these cartels. And so they're like, okay, well, they're legalizing it, there's less demand for it. So let's turn to other things, whether it be cocaine or poppy plant production is actually through the roof in Mexico right now and the government's trying to find a way to deal with it. And it's because there is a huge demand for heroin, there is a huge demand for opioids. And so um, yeah, we can criminalize all we want or, and again, it makes people uncomfortable, you can legalize it and regulate it or at least decriminalize it and regulate it the way Portugal did. They did that and what happened? Uh, the drug use actually dipped considerably. You stop criminalizing people for having drug addictions. You take the power away from cartels. Now that that requires smart policy, and unfortunately, we have an incredibly unintelligent administration running the country right now. So I have absolutely no hope that they're going to right the wrongs. But these are the things that we need to have real conversations about. Continuing the war on drugs is not going to help. The number of casualties in Mexico actually dipped a little bit, but then shot back up, and I'll tell you why. So the arrests and killings of top leaders in major cartels like Los Zetas, infamous for their brutality and mass decapitations, contributed to the dip in violence. But new groups have emerged adopting similarly brutal strategies for territorial expansion and control. So it's like the, the war on terror, right? Let's go after the terrorists. But the more we get involved and the more we try to fight this war on terror, the more more you see other groups of terrorists emerge, right? And so there's smart policy or there's a continuation of what we've been doing, which hasn't been working. But there's a reason why these wars are never ending, just like George Orwell warned us about. Because people profit from those wars so that they think, yeah, the whole point of the war is that it's supposed to be perpetual. It, now, if you are an American citizen and you're or a citizen of any of these other countries, does it look like it's working for you? How many decades are we gonna go with this failed strategy before we turn around? So it's on you, especially in America, to make the decision to stop voting in favor of this insane war on drugs. 
Look, prohibition never works. It didn't work when we did it with alcohol. What did it create? It created gangs, Al Capone and all those other gangs out of Chicago and so many other places. Then when we did prohibition on marijuana, what did it do? It created gangs. What did both those gangs do? Kill a lot of people, whether it was in America or in Mexico and other places. And by the way, Anna's right, prohibition on those other drugs don't work either. And in, in, in legalizing it or decriminalizing it doesn't mean you like the drugs. You shouldn't take heroin, it's a disastrous idea, right? But when you do those things, it actually makes that drug use less, not more. Right. When are we going to actually look at facts and make decisions based on those instead of letting our politicians drive us into these endless wars that only benefit them and not us? We're not the Young Turks, you're the Young Turks. You power this show. Together we built something amazing. We've broken stories like the Donna Brazil story, the mainstream media wouldn't break. We built the studio, we built this network, it's now number one, all thanks to you guys. Let's come build it even bigger and stronger. tytnetwork.com slash join.